what's up youtube welcome back to my channel i'm steph growing in zone 6b if you are here for the first time welcome for the first time um it's time to do some tomato maintenance so i planted my tomatoes back in may i started them in the house um i fertilized the other day and now it is time to maintenance so i'm gonna show y'all my tomato jungle and I'm going to talk to y'all about what I'm going to do. So this is my tomato jungle. I have tomatoes in here. It stinks to high heavens because I just put in some homemade fish fertilizer that I made um, a couple months ago. And it smells really bad. <laughs> but I'm going to get in here and uh, get this tomato jungle together. Now, as you can see, these tomato plants are like they pass waist high for me my tomatoes normally get really really tall normally about five feet or so i have tomatoes all in here i have tomatoes all in there this is a grapevine i need to take that out that was a poor choice to put that right there i thought this concord grapevine was vining fyi it is not i have another one on this side that's vining concord grapevine isn't um but anywho i got some tomato jungle in there and um it need to get handled even over here y'all potatoes right there but tomatoes 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 and lots more of tomatoes so i'm gonna tell y'all what i'm gonna do these tomatoes are finally growing this heat is helping out a lot it's it's the weather is starting to be consistent and so it's time to get it going so the first thing I'm going to do with this tomato jungle um, is I'm going to look for the diseased leaves. So tomato plants normally start to disease from the bottom. Um, well, at least mine do anyway. I'm going to bring y'all in close so that you guys can see. Do you guys see these leaves down here? You see how they have these spots on it? Now, that brown with the yellow ring around it is a fungal disease that's fine but it's going to be time to prune these tomato plants now fungal disease can come from a couple different things number one let me see if i can set this tripod up right and just lean it down so y'all can see there we go um, mostly from my understanding, it comes from the, uh, soil, uh, splashing up on the plants when you water. So, I'm going to take care of that, and then I'm going to show y'all what else I'm going to do. So, I constantly kind of watch out for my tomato plants. If it is a situation where it has... A ton of fungal disease then I will take it all the way up and I will do a treatment but since this is right here at the bottom then I don't so you see this leaf you see how it has this brown spotting right there you see the yellow around it that's the fungal disease I'm gonna go ahead and prune it off just like this and you know sometimes it might seem a little harsh, but um, I promise you, your tomatoes will be better for it. Now, one thing that I will say is, if the fungal disease to gets to be too much, like, say that it gets the stem and it comes, like, all the way up here. I have pruned that far up before, but... It's not that bad. If you take care of it in the beginning, 9 out of 10 chances, um, your plant will be all right. Now, as you can see, there's like some yellowing here. I mean, this, this plant has some yellowing here, but these leaves down here are dark, dark green. Can y'all see that? I want to bring y'all in close. So you see how this plant up here, it looks healthy, but that right there... It's just a little bit greener. So, 
you know, that lets me know that the plant is going to be okay, that it's doing all right, that it's growing well. So, I have another one right here. Um, I just put in these eight foot fairing strips. This one is the same way. Has some fungal disease. You know, another thing that can cause fungal disease with your tomato plants is um, the uh, plants being too close together. So, some people prune their tomato plants. I don't. I like to get as many tomatoes as I can and the production stems allow me to do that so I don't prune my tomato plants. I also look for tomato hornworms. This is right around the time where they might want to show up and uh, give me a run for their money and you know I'm just not going to have it. So I'm going to prune these tomatoes, clean them up. Um, if I see some like leaves like touching the soil, I'll go ahead and take those leaves up and take them off. My stems are nice and healthy. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Do y'all see? Let me see if I can get this camera right. Do y'all see how thick my stems are? Um, how nice and healthy it is. You know, the plant is greened up. My stems are always that way and I never usually have an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these plants up and then I'm gonna show y'all what I am going to do next. cleaned up all these tomato plants that's the first thing I'm gonna do and then the second thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and use some jute and tie them up so this is my jute that's what I got um, I just take a little bit take a little bit like this and I just tie these tomato plants up and that's what I do. And for the record, y'all, I broke one of my um, marigold stems over there. I was so disappointed. I planted these giant marigolds. That's what these are right here. It's giant marigold. They are like knee height for me. Um, and I am absolutely loving them. I'm going to plant these giant marigolds every single year. Um, they were so easy to grow from seed. And they pack such an impact you know, just to kind of give you guys, like, a different idea of what you can plant. I think I got the seeds from, like, Walmart or something. Actually, I might have got them from, or I might have got them from, like, the Dollar Tree. I might have not even noticed that they were giant marigolds. I think I just saw marigold and got it. And then when they started to grow big, I looked it up, and they were, like, giant. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Y'all know how you be, just picking up seeds, and you don't know what it is. And then, you know, all of a sudden... You got something cool? Yeah, that's what happened. Anyway, I'm gonna get in here and tie these up. So, I finished this tomato jungle. Um, as you can see, 
I put some jute right here. Sometimes this jute doesn't last long and it breaks, but as you can see, I left the space here, here. Don't smash this plant all the way into whatever you're using to trellis. Um, it's just not a good idea to smash the stem. You, you wanna leave a little bit of space. Um, another thing is, you see how, I'll give you, show you an example of, nope, some of these, so if you've seen your stems, I don't have any examples right now. Oh, yes, I do. Let me walk y'all over here so I can show y'all what I'm talking about. Ooh, I ain't gonna even lie, y'all, I ain't even get to that other bit. But when it comes to tomatoes, do you see that flower right there? This one right here? The brown one so it didn't get pollinated all of these tomatoes all of the tomatoes are um self-fertile i won't say self-pollinating i say self-fertile and what that means is the bees will come and uh stimulate the plant like this you know when they're eating that's kind of what it looks like and then the plant will then uh become fertile and your tomato will pop out that's in layman's terms how i know how to say it so with your tomatoes if you don't have a lot of pollinators when you walk past them i normally take my two fingers and i do like this and i give them a little shake give them a little shake like that and then you should not have an issue another thing i look for is to make sure that I have proper airflow. Like this tomato plant and this tomato plant, the leaves are kind of touching. You see how if I pull it back, I'll leave a space like in between like that. You wanna kind of leave a space, let some air get in there. I'll probably put some jute right here just to make sure that this plant has enough space. And then, you know, that's how I maintenance my tomatoes. Now, I haven't done the other beds yet. I have, like I said, this bed here. I still have to tie up these tomatoes. I should have plenty of tomatoes this season. I still gotta prune the lower leaves off. As you can see, there is some fungal disease right there um, at the bottom right here that needs to be pruned. And so I will take care of that. So, you know, that's it y'all. Oh, one more thing. When you're done pruning, Wash those pruners off. You do not want to be transferring fungal disease from plant to plant to plant. I ain't gonna lie. I haven't done it every time, but you should do it. That's, that's kind of best practice. When you're pruning things, especially if you know if it's got a fungal disease, you don't want to go ahead and transfer that off to a different tomato plant or something else. Just, I, I normally um, wash mine off with a little bit of alcohol Go ahead, rub alcohol, wash it off, make sure they're clean, soapy water, that sort of thing. Um, to me, I like alcohol. Um, my arm is burning. Um, the foliage from the tomato plants um, always irritates my skin for whatever reason. Not allergic to tomatoes, but the foliage irritates my skin, so that's what I was looking at. But anyway, that's going to do it, y'all. That is how I maintenance my tomatoes. I hope that you guys have a prosperous harvest and um, get out there, do your pruning, do your trellising, um, do your fertilizing, uh, do your staking, or don't do none of it at all. I mean, tomato plants are a vine. You can let them run all over the yard and they will root that way, but you will be more susceptible to fungal disease. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all on the next video. Y'all get out there, y'all get growing, and uh, bye for now.